Order members, item 7 on the order paper, the adjournment. The proposer of the topic will have 15 minutes, and all other speakers will on this occasion have only four minutes. There has been quite an uh, interest in uh, wanting to speak in this debate, so it will be four minutes for other members. Um, I now call Dahi Mackay. Uh, I get a last can clear, uh, and I raise last can clear uh, knowing that this is the first debate uh, on the issue of the Dalriada Hospital uh, since November last year, uh, 2014. Uh, and a lot uh, has happened uh, since November last year. Uh, and I think it's important, first of all, uh, to put in public record <coughs> in this House uh, thanks and appreciation to the Save the Dal campaign that, in the end, in terms of the last financial year anyway, saved the Dal. Uh, I'd like to thank its committee, uh, I'd like to thank its volunteers, the social media activists, the tractor drivers who, who campaigned uh, and rallies around the town, the public uh, who turned out uh, in hundreds and hundreds in public meetings uh, in Bush Mills, Ballycastle, uh, Cushendall uh, and elsewhere. <coughs> and I'll never forget uh, I'll ask Alaskan Corey the first meeting we had in Ballycastle uh, in the Shesburn. Uh, where there was no standing room. They had to set up other rooms for members of the public. Uh, and for Tony Stevens, who just came into post uh, at that time at, at the Trust, it was very much uh, a baptism of fire. So a lot has happened since then. Thankfully, uh, the Trust uh, changed its position. Uh, thankfully, uh, Philomena Mackay uh, was successful in her legal challenge, uh, which saw the High Court overturn uh, the non-admissions policy. <coughs> And at that time, this assembly, this assembly backed the reinstatement uh, and continuation uh, of services uh, at Dalriada, and I hope that remains the case, uh, because a motion was brought forward by my constituency colleague, uh, Mr. Swan, uh, at that time, and it had the unanimous support uh, of this House. So this House does support the Dalriada; uh, it supports the retention of services there, uh, and we need to ensure that that remains uh, the case. In, in February of this year, Moyle Council, the old Moyle Council now, commissioned a report into the future uh, of Dalriada Hospital. Uh, and at this moment in time, the Dal has 20 intermediate beds, 12 MS respite beds, and a range of clinics and outpatient services. And the report takes a holistic approach to the Dal. And it was very, very frustrating uh, when the Trust last year. Uh, focus on short-term savings without looking at the real concept of value for money and how rural-based services uh, can save the taxpayer money by preventing things like bed blocking uh, and the taking up of, of beds in acute hospitals, uh, namely Antermaria Hospital, Causeway and Alton Galvin in this case. And it's very frustrating because the dial works. Uh, it has a high level of demand for beds. Uh, and the occupancy figures remain in excess of 90 per cent. Now, this report, uh, carried out by Colin Stott Consulting uh, and Seamus Keery, I believe demonstrates to the Trust that there is opportunity, opportunity to innovate, opportunity to save money, and opportunity to improve the health uh, of the local community. And I know the Minister wants to see all of these things. Uh, I know from his time in finance that he was big in terms of innovation. Well, I believe this is a big opportunity in terms of innovation and public sector reform. <coughs> we have also seen comments from Dr George O'Neill last week along a similar line that there needs to be leadership, there needs to be innovation uh, uh, in the health service, uh, uh, and the minister himself uh, asked for that uh, to be brought forward. Uh, so this is an example of that being brought forward. <coughs> Minister, there is emerging evidence of new approaches uh, to addressing the needs uh, of elderly populations. And an example was a pilot uh, in New Quay in Cornwall. Uh, this is now being rolled out across seven locations in England, including Cornwall uh, and the Isles of Scilly, uh, with up to 1,000 patients covered in each of these cases. And early res results show significant improvements in well-being 
and substantial savings through reduced hospital admissions. Early figures include a reduction in all acute hospital costs of 41 per cent, a reduction in all non-elective hospital costs of 61 per cent, a reduction in inpatient hospital activity by 43 per cent, a reduction in emergency department hospital activity of 36 per cent, and a reduction in total uh, social care costs of 8 per cent. And as the new Causeway Coast and Glens Council uh, has already stated, the population currently served by the Dalriata is perfectly suitable uh, for a pilot of this new approach. It could be a hub for outreach, support and care services for the frail, the elderly and the vulnerable in Ballycastle and its surrounding area, its surrounding villages, its surrounding hamlets. Uh, and this could be a pilot for the rest of the Causeway Coast and Glens Council area. It, it, it could be a pilot for much uh, further afield in, in terms of the north. Minister, we're nearly a year on from the proposal to, in effect, close the Dalriada Hospital. I do not want to see the same happen this year. I do not want to see any sudden announcements, anything that will set, send the community uh, into, a, into a spin as it did last year. And that community has character, that community has resolve, uh, and that community demonstrated uh, how you stand up uh, and, and give your own community a voice, uh, and, and give an example uh, of volunteerism, uh, the likes of which we have never seen uh, in North Antrim. And I would again like to commend, commend them for that. <coughs> And why would, why, would, why would we like an assurance? Uh, I believe because it shows in this report that despite the outright opposition uh, to the trust proposal last year, that the community actually listened and the community responded uh, to the trust, taking into account the financial difficulties and the issues uh, that the trust uh, do face. Uh, and in June, Minister, you stated that there have been a lot of opinions expressed about diagnosing the problems, but not a lot of suggestions as to what the exact treatment should be. This model is called the Dalriada Pathfinder. This is innovation uh, in health care. It will lead to better outcomes in health. It will lead to greater savings at a time when money uh, is more scarce. And this deserves your support. Thank you. I call Paul Free. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I commend the member across the way for uh, having this adjournment debate at a very timely junction. Uh, and of course, we do recall the campaign that was led uh, last year uh, by Save the Dal Group. Uh, and having worked with other MLAs, like-minded to myself, uh, who fought hard for the Dalriada Hospital and who worked closely with the, the people involved uh, in the, the group. I seen straight away that this wasn't just a normal campaign that people fight uh, when things close and that there was actually method in all of this and a strategy was put in place that not only because you see it's easy, it's easy to fight for things to be remained open. It's easy to uh, do the polar opposite of a government agency or the trust. But it's harder when you try to justify it or try to get uh, rationale and arguments for keeping something open and enhancing something. And see if the Dal group done that tremendously well. Not only did they, they have a coherent strategy of motivating and mobilizing the community, they done that also very, very well but they had strategy, tangible plans in place to enhance the DAL. Not to save it, to enhance it. And I think sometimes now, when I think of the group, save the DAL group probably isn't the most appropriate name for the group. It should be enhance the DAL group because they're doing what they said they would and they're putting their practice into play and they've produced a report uh, with regards to the the Pathfinder, the Dalriada Pathfinder pilot and the report. 
and I've had a look at this, and I do agree with my colleague across the way, this could well be the way to go. This seems to be getting a reasonable uh, hearing from movers and shakers within the trust and within the local uh, Coast and um, Causeway Glens, uh, Causeway and, uh, Coast Glens um, Council. So this is something that has merit. This is something that should be looked at. And I would uh, ask everyone and plead with the Minister to look at this report and see what can be done uh, using it. Uh, I, I do think, uh, and we fight this endless battle with the Trust, and every time I meet the Trust, uh, the Chief Executive and everyone else below, I keep pleading with them, please stop delivering messages out to the population and to us MLAs and to the Minister that is in a piecemeal way and a negative way. We're sick to the back teeth of hearing about closure this and closure that. Let us see a holistic approach. Let us see a plan for the whole of the Northern area. And then that may be the, the logic and the rationale that is needed for when decisions have to be taken. I'm not saying hard decisions should not be taken. I think they should be. But to simply decide one month we're closing this part of, of health and then next month we're closing this part of health, it is wrong. It is, it is unreasonable to suggest that people should go with that. And I believe there could be a holistic approach where the trust lays it down where everything should be, and the whole jigsaw at the one time can be viewed by the population. I know what it feels like when a town loses its hospital. I still get it on the doors. Every single week I knock doors about losing the, Bell the Bellman ho the hospital and how we've suffered since. And the trust would tell you, the trust would admit that this is a mistake, that Antrim Area Hospital was put in the wrong place, which meant then the causeway hospital had to be put in the wrong place then also. So that shows you that one error impacts on another error, impacts on another error. They should not make the same mistake in the future. It is also clear with Pinewood, they tell us that we have enough sufficient uh, bed space in Bellamina and we don't need Pinewood. Well, when I write to the Minister or the Trust with my constituents' needs, needing a bed in Bellamina area, they're given a list of beds and not one of them will be in Bellamina. And that is wrong. And that's why I want to see a holistic approach by the Trust and Del Riata being part of that plan. Thank you very much. I call John Dallet. Um, Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm pleased to take part in this debate as I was involved in the campaign over there. And uh, I have to express disappointment that we haven't moved forward, but I am encouraged by the uh, contributions made uh, to date. I became involved with the DAL many years ago in quite an unusual way. A good friend of mine had MS, and he was looked after in uh, Peter Stott Martin House in Cullabacky, and of course was devastated when that closed. But there was a, an undertaking given that th the same quality of service or better would be provided at the DAL, and it certainly lived up to that. And it, it must be devastating for those people who are MS sufferers to find it for the second time they have been let down. The closure, of course, does not doesn't only affect MS sufferers, but it is in complete contra contradiction to transforming your care. These cuts and closures are not consistent with the community-focused ambition of TYC. TYC aims to shift the positions of health care from centralised institutions into the community in order to facilitate people better, closer to their homes. The decision to close community facilities will have a devastating effect on patients and their families. Some reference has been made to the overstay of patients in the uh, main hospitals on the causeway and uh, in Antrim. And a GP told me the other day that the problem very clearly is the lack of uh, intermediary care, which of course uh, the DAL was, was providing and is part of the future. As Paul Frew has pointed out, it's not just about saving the DAL, it's about actually planning a, uh, planning a future which in fact meets the needs of the people. Now we are blessed that we have two excellent hospitals, but they have problems with bed blocking and looking after patients who are not quite ready for home but could in fact be looked after for a short time in, in the DAL. 
Now, some reference has been made to the report, uh, July report published in 2015 to save the Dahl Group. The recommendations in that report are encouraging. Piloting the uh, Living Well approaches in the Ballycastle area, working in partnership with the Trust, the Council, the local community and community and voluntary sector. The Living Well approach would turn the Dahl into a hub uh, for outreach, support and care for the frail, elderly and vulnerable people in the Ballycastle and beyond. It is worth noting that these proposals have not yet formally been presented to the Northern Health and Social Services Trust, and so therefore the debate may, in a sense, be immature. I don't know. But look, Mr Deputy Speaker, it's a real pity that this Assembly is again in doubt, and the ordinary bread and butter issues that we're discussing now may not be adequately addressed, and that would be a shame. Let us hope in the next few weeks the negotiations will bear in mind that there are very serious issues relating to health that haven't been addressed, and they must be uh, addressed in an ever-changing world. I have the highest praise for my hospital in Coleraine. The DAL, as an outreach, performs a vital service to that hospital to make it uh, viable and to make it, it also part of the future. So we're not just talking about Save the Dal. We're talking about retaining and enhancing a facility which will give absolute essential uh, support uh, to our two main hospitals. Thanks. I call Robin Swan. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. And again, can I thank Mr Mackay for bringing this adjournment topic. I think in reflection has probably been the most debated adjournment topic coming from North Antrim, I think, in, in my time since being here. And it has received at every occasion cross-party support. Uh, I'm proposing the motion Mr Mackay mentioned about Tony Stevens actually appearing at the first public meeting in Glen Shesk, where there was hundreds uh, of activists and, and community people there. I think it was, it was one of the occasions, I say could possibly one of the few occasions, where myself, Dachy, Mervyn Storey, Jim Allister, Donald Cunningham shared a platform in the single same message. And I think it was also the last time that Tony Stevens was ever seen in public as well. But that's, uh, I'm aware that Fergal you know, came later to one of the meetings in Bush Mills as well, but he wasn't, I see him indicating there just so he's acknowledged. But I think, Mr. Mr. Speaker, or Deputy Speaker, that demonstrates the seriousness of the campaign to save the dollar. It was never seen about saving a building, but it was about seen as, as preserving the continuity and enhancing the continuity of a service that was currently there. And I think previous speakers have indicated that's where the campaign started. It was about saving and, and keeping what was already there. But having had a chance to, to look in detail at the Dalryada Pathfinder pilot, I think it's a tremendous piece of work for any community group to undertake outside of any structured body or trust or, or development proposal, to bring a development proposal forward to this length of detail and the research and the structure that was on behind it, I think they have to be commended. But I think Mr Dallet's right, you know, maybe we are preempting that presentation of that pilot project to the Northern Health and Social Care Trust because that's where the decision will be made and maybe that's where we should wait to see their reaction to this pilot project. But hopefully the Minister's reaction to the pilot project and what the Dalryada Pathfinder is about delivering to, here today to the members that have debated this and brought this forward will be an indication as to how he thinks the Northern Health and Social Care Trust can possibly take it forward. Mr Principal Deputy, or Deputy Speaker, I think there will not be a disagreement from any speaker in here today that the Save the Dal campaign has worked. The Dalryada Pathfinder pilot project is another step on the road for retaining that vital service that has been delivering for the community in the Causeway Coast and Glens for a number of years. And as Mr Mackay said, you know, it received the support from the Moyle Council. It has also received unanimous backing from the Causeway Coast and Glens Council as well. So there is a strong feeling that, that this is a way to go as a pilot project. I call David McElveen. 
Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And uh, again, I certainly do welcome the opportunity to speak on this matter. Um, it's something that I think is close to the hearts of not just the people of North Antrim, but obviously, as we can see from other constituencies represented, um, it has certainly had an impact on, uh, on many, many people. The sense of community involvement from this campaign has been astonishing. And I think it has shown um, just how much this, this place means to the people um, in the area. Um, and as Robin Swan has just said, um, it's not just about a building. Uh, and you know, I think there is at times an over uh, sentimentality that sometimes exists with buildings, particularly hospitals where maybe there have been births and there have been good memories that have come from those buildings. But this is absolutely not about that. Uh, it is about a service. It's about a unique service. It's about a, a service that other people have tried to replicate, so there has been patients that have, for various reasons, not been able to have, for example, respite in the Dalriata Hospital that have went to other places. And unfortunately, the level of care um, in every other occasion has been, has been found wanting within the private sector. So therefore, uh, I can understand why the community has worked so hard uh, to try to come up with an alternative, to try to keep uh, the Dalriata Hospital functioning um, in, in whatever capacity it possibly can. The minister also worked hard, um, and uh, the current minister's predecessor um, did visit the hospital during the, the, the campaign. Uh, I think it was one of the most amusing things that I have seen uh, as Minister Wells attempted to uh, consp inconspicuously leave the, the premises through a side door as he had another engagement to go to. The look on his face as 200 supporters uh, bounded towards his car, led by Ian Paisley, um, was a look of terror that I will never forget. Um, and uh, I, I hope that that in some way uh, helped to convince Jim Wells that uh, keeping the, the Dalriad open was, was important. So the minister worked hard, the MPs, the MLAs have worked hard. Well, why did we do that? I think it's very simple because there are two categories as far as the people in this area are concerned. There are things that people care about and there are things that people don't care about in this area. The things that they do care about, Mr. Deputy Speaker, is that the Dalriad continues to deliver good outcomes for patients. That is absolutely head and shoulders uh, the outcome that, uh, that is required uh, for, for people living in the area. Secondly, they care about a good level of care, and as I've mentioned, there has been occasions where unfortunately alternative care arrangements outside of Dalriada ha have been uh, found wanting, and I know that's something uh, that both the Minister and the Trust, I'm sure, would want to ensure does not happen in the future. Thirdly, I think the people care about is a secure future for the Dalriada because this crisis management approach year to year with the fear or the threat of, of a partial or full closure is something that just drains the life out of people uh, and it drains their energy and that constant feeling of a, of a, of a threat upon it is something uh, that I believe that people care deeply about that they want to see something done about. What people don't care about is who funds it. And that's why I believe the uh, piece of work that has been done, the Dalriada Pathfinder uh, document, is, is something that is worthy of consideration because it takes a lot of the financial responsibility um, away from the trust, away from the department, uh, and it brings in other stakeholders that also have a vested interest in this. And I think it is right. Uh, we all talk in this place regularly about uh, cross-departmental thinking and how we can do things differently. Uh, and this, this document on undoubtedly provides um, a way in which to do that. So I believe it is the right thing to consider it. I believe that Dalriata should be considered as a pilot for this particular project. I know the minister, having worked very closely with him in his days in the Department of Finance, loves to quote people. He's quoted everybody from Gandhi to John Lennon. I'm going to quote Mark Twain in finishing and say, it will, in doing the right thing, it will gratify some people and astonish the rest. I call Jim Allister. Thank you. I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak again in support of the Dáil. Uh, and could I um, commend the tenacity of the Save the Dáil campaign, uh, which didn't shrink away from taking on the trust in the department, and which, for its tenacity and the common sense that was on its side, saw 
a very significant victory for people power over the trust and the department. Uh, and that was very welcome indeed. And it is also good to note that not prepared to leave it there, they then uh, embarked upon this self-help initiative, producing the Common Stutt Report, and it certainly makes for a very interesting read with some uh, positive proposals within it. And one of the most important things for me that it says in terms of moving forward is that drawing on the lesson of the attempt by the trust and department to ram something down the community's throat, that there has to be a partnership approach to moving forward, that it cannot be, again, a top-down dictatorship, simply handing down the solution, as seen by some. But if there is to be a future moulded that meets the needs of all interests, then it has to be one done in partnership. And it has to be one, as the report reflects, which itself is reflected of the particular composition of that locality, with its higher than average number of senior citizens. Uh, and that, therefore, there has to be what the report uh, talks about as a strong fit between the needs of the area and the outcomes for the area. And that is, I believe, key to all of this, that it has to be a wholesale systems approach so that there is that tight fit between what the community needs and what uh, the outcomes will be. If I had one reservation about the thrust of the conclusions of the Stutt report, it would be in the realm of the lack of very clear focus, I thought, on the, f the future of the MS facility. It seems to me it was a bit light in that department, and yet that is, I believe, a vital facility for that area and the wider area. But I think holistically it is, tracks a potential future approach which is much to recommend it and certainly far preferable to the cul-de-sac that the Trust and the Department previously wanted to lead us into. So I trust that the spirit that um, motivated and the vision that motivated the Sea of the Dow campaign will continue to the final delivery of that which does fit the needs of that region. Thank you. I call Fergal McKinney. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And can I uh, to welcome the opportunity to take part in today's adjournment to be, uh, debate? And I do so because as health, SDLP health spokesperson, I recognise the important role that Dalry Adan can commend uh, Mr Mackay for bringing the uh, debate to the Chamber, but recognise the role that the hospital plays in the, in the local community. community. And can I also commend all of those who have been involved in, uh, in the Save the Dal campaign, who adopted probably at the start an emotional uh, approach to this, but very quickly, as has been reflected in this debate today, moved on to the strategic uh, and uh, uh, approach, which I think has been very welcome indeed. Uh, Mr. Alistair has referred to the MS uh, unit. And I think it is important uh, to recognise the extent to which that illness puts severe pressure and demands uh, on the individuals and families, and respite provision there is all the more important, as is, and I think this is what you're reflecting, the need for a centre for excellence, uh, and that other trusts need to be uh, availing of that service to make it to, uh, as viable as possible. But if we look back over the decisions and events in the last months, we can see how important local hospitals are to communities and, and the strength, if you like, of a local community uh, coming together in force. And I was delighted, as uh, others have clearly reflected here today, to see the strength of, of that support 
uh, and the fact that it resulted in 20,000 signatures being brought here to Stormont, uh, numerous uh, debates, rallies, and I've welcomed the opportunity, having been invited to Bush Mills. Uh, and it became clear very, very quickly just how prized and valued the Dalriada facility is in the local uh, community, and importantly, that it has local cross-party political uh, backing. But for me, uh, to get down to the bolts, not some bolts of it, the, the decision actually lays bare the lack of strategic direction uh, um, in terms of a department looking for cuts and then foisting cuts on trusts who make them without uh, a strategic context. In fact, the excuse comes back from the trusts that this is counter-strategic. We all know that the health service is under severe financial pressure, and we have to be, as Mr. Frew was saying, mature about that. Uh, but it's how cuts are administered, I think, is important. And the House will be aware, and I've reminded it many times, as the Minister will be aware, uh, uh, of the importance uh, of TYC at the heart of the health service. Uh, but how that plan has not been funded properly, and, theref and therefore how major cuts that have emerged as a result, uh, and those uh, uh, impositions of contingency plans are counter-strategic. And I think it's very important to state to the House that the Dalriada closure was not a strategic cut. It was a short-term cut. And the previous Health Minister had to admit that uh, in this very chamber. And I welcome the fact that the courts, I believe, took the right decision on it. Mr. Frew wants a holistic approach. I want a holistic approach. And I think the chamber, as reflected here today, wants a holistic approach. That's what TYC was supposed to be about. TYC was supposed to be identifying uh, the elements within a community that could be dealt with to keep people away from the expensive uh, side of the health service. And you know, it's supposed to be a mixed market, if you like, in that sense. And if anything represented that, it would be a centre of excellence, as Mr. Alistair talked about in terms of NS, a step-down facility within the local community, married to uh, uh, further and better services being delivered out into the community that prevents people having to come up to the very expensive side of health, be it in Causeway or Antrim or indeed, indeed in Belfast. And we haven't got that. And I would make a plea once again for us to return to the principles of that and let's start jointly finding uh, some sort of mechanism to achieve, to achieve that. Um, can I refer to the report uh, as well? It makes some clear recommendations on how Dalriada Hospital could be retained and reconfigured. Uh, and I'm struck by the figures. And can you bring your remarks to close, please? Of course, uh, Mr. Speaker. I'm struck by the figures. There could be savings in this. I could have more to say. Time has beaten me, but uh, can I support the motion? Thank you. And I call the Minister of Health, Social Services and Public Safety, Mr Simon Hamilton, to respond to the debate. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I'd like to begin by thanking uh, Mr Mackay for proposing today's uh, German debate. Uh, and I have to say, so I've, uh, I've been impressed with the um, very considered, very thoughtful uh, and valuable contributions that have been made in the Chamber this evening. Uh, and I hope to be able to respond in the remarks that I make to, to most of the points that are being raised. Um, it is clear, it's clear to me, that the Dalriada Hospital and the services that, that services that it provides are held in the highest regard by the people of the community that it serves. Uh, as we've heard today from, from, I think, virtually every speaker, Dalriada Hospital provides a range of non-acute community hospital services, including intermediate care beds and a multiple cirrhosis respite unit, along with outpatient and allied health professional clinics, as well as a GP health centre. We're all well aware of the background uh, of this debate, and if we weren't aware, we would have been familiarised with it during the course of, of today's uh, German debate. The decision last year by the Northern Health and Social Care Trust to temporarily close the intermediate care beds and the MS respite unit beds, followed by the restoration of the status quo as a result of the court's interim relief ruling in December 2014. But that cannot and is not the end of the story. The pressures and service trends which lay behind the Northern Trust's decision are very much still with us. I think we're all familiar with the pressures facing our health and social care services, which include a rise in chronic conditions driven by both our ageing population and unhealthy lifestyle habits, increasing demand and over-reliance on hospital services, growing expectations of our population, 
and fast-moving opportunities in technology and medical interventions, workforce challenges and, of course, the current financial pressures that we face. The Northern Trust has, been, has not been immune to these challenges, and I want to talk a little bit about the Northern Trust if I can. I acknowledge that there have been problems in the past, and it would be foolish to think that there won't be difficulties in the future. However, this trust is transforming. I am determined that the lessons learned from the turnaround process will be carried forward and become embedded as this organisation continues to improve. I think it is important to set the context in terms of what Care the Northern Trust delivers on a day-to-day -day basis and in, the, and in the environment in which it operates. The Northern Trust area has a population of 440,000 people, the largest resident population in Northern Ireland. In common with the rest of Northern Ireland, the demand for health and social care in the Northern Trust area grows annually by approximately 6%. This includes demographic growth, resulting in more older people with complex health needs and comorbidities, and increased referrals. In 2014-15, the Trust had 50,625 people admitted to hospital care and 26,581 day cases. 2.6 million hours of domiciliary care were provided through the Trust and the independent sector, which equates to care for 4,600 people. Despite the scale of the challenges this Trust has faced and overcome, they have also performed well. Performance in terms of unscheduled care has improved remarkably. In 2014-15, across the Trust, there was a 35 per cent reduction in patients waiting more than 12 hours to be assessed, treated and either discharged or admitted to hospital, and this improvement builds on the 50 per cent reduction in the previous year. In addition, the Northern Trust's acute hospital network has been recognised among the 40 top hospitals in the UK for 2014. The 40 top awards are based on the evaluation of 22 indicators covering safety, clinical effectiveness, health outcomes, efficiency, patient experience and quality of care. This is a trust that is doing well and this is an indication that it is focused on the task in hand which is to deliver high quality, safe and effective care in the most efficient manner possible. I'd like to pay tribute to the hard working staff in the hospitals and those delivering health and social care services in the community for their service to the local, local area and their commitment in delivering high quality services. And I wish to pay tribute as well to the leadership of the Trust as well. When I took up post in May, I, I set out my vision for a world class health and social care system in Northern Ireland, building on the many world class services that we already have. Delivering that vision requires innovation change and reform across our health and social services and in the next number of weeks I intend to come forward with my vision for the future of health and social care in Northern Ireland, how we intend to take forward those recommendations within the Donaldson report, how we intend to take forward future commissioning and how we intend to reform the administration of the health and social care system in our country. That is a huge undertaking of major reform but it's much needed reform. Whenever you look at the range of challenges that our health system and our social care system faces, these are not decisions that we can continually push down the line. We need to take decisions and we need to get political consensus around them. Our current pattern of health and social care services is not sustainable and needs to change. Transforming your care and the Donaldson report both make important points about the need for a mature debate about the future of our overall hospital-based services. They need to shift from hospital-based care and the need to ensure our finite resources are maximised to provide the best value for money for patients and the services provided for them. The challenge for us today is to, is to sustain and further develop the best in health and social care while embracing innovation. And as Mr Mackay pointed out, I am supportive of innovation across the public sector. There is much evidence of innovation within the health and social care sector. I, I, I've been pleasantly surprised by the evidence of innovation right across the health and social care sector since taking up post. But of course, embracing innovation, as I've been encouraged by Mr. Mackay, involves challenges for us all because new ways of working, or new ways of working which maximise the considerable but also limited resources that are available to the health and social care system, sometimes means doing things differently, and doing things differently can cause concern. But if the outcomes are better, I think it is well worth pursuing that path. Being innovative means taking decisions about how and where we deliver services to maximise the quality of care for patients and to deliver the very best outcomes and to ensure that patient safety is maintained. Uh, what does this all mean for the future of Dalriada Hospital? I know the members would wish to have a commitment from me today that intermediate care and MS respite services at Dalriada Hospital will remain, will remain unchanged indefinitely forever and a day, but that's not something that, which I can give. Decisions about the provision of services at Dalriada Hospital are and should always be in the first instance 
matters for the Northern Trust to consider. And as in this, as I will in other, uh, lots of issues, I will look to trusts, I look to clinicians and, and others for their expert advice on quality and particularly safety of services. To this end, the Northern Trust has been reviewing the range of services available across the trust area in relation to intermediate care and is developing a long-term vision predicated on the need to maintain people at home for as long as possible and to provide services at home or as close to home as possible. And it is their intention to engage with a range of stakeholders this coming um, later in this autumn. The Trust has worked closely with MS service users to capture their views and requirements in relation to respite care at Dalriata, what is available and how to access it. At the request of service users, the Trust has developed a, a leaflet to highlight the range of respite care options available. At present, the majority of users would not want hospital-based respite. I am aware that, and it was referenced uh, I think in virtually every contribution, seen that mo the, the old Moyle District Council, now part of the Causeway Coast and Glens Borough Council, commissioned a report to support the case for a continued role for Dalriada Hospital. I have taken a look at the report. I think it's, a, it's an excellent report. Um, it recognises um, the need for a changing role for small local hospitals like the Dalriada. Uh, and, and I think the um, particular recommendation around a, its future as a hub for outreach, support and care for frail, for elderly people and for vulnerable people in general in the area is an interesting proposition and one worth carefully considering and I will ensure that and that consideration is given by the Trust. It does represent change, um, but I think it is positive change to the service uh, and I think it is something, as I said, that is worth studying more carefully and I will ensure that the Trust do that. Mr Deputy Speaker, in conclusion, I have I've, I've no doubt that this um, um, report will make a valuable contribution to the discussions which the Trust will have with the Council and other stakeholders as to the future of these services, as the future of these services are discussed and shaped over coming months. I can assure you all here this evening that the Northern Health and Social Care Trust will engage fully with the people who use the services, the staff who deliver those services and the wider community in discussing the future of the Dalriada Hospital. The question is that the Assembly do not adjourn. The Assembly is adjourned.